All right, listen. If you want to come a foreign, come paint man toenail and wash man underwear locked up in a prison cell somewhere, then that is all fine and dandy for you if that is your choice, right? In this video, we're going to talk about life in U.S. prison for foreigners. We're going to talk about the RICO drug law. We're going to talk about the kingpin law. And we're going to talk about this idiot, Mr. U-Haul, that just got caught in the airport that was a flight crew member with X amount of drugs on him and the possible times our charges that Welcome he's facing. Welcome to Social TV again, everybody. It's your host with the most. So, as you see, I've already put out one video, right? And the video was just the breaking news of him being caught. A lot of people are saying, yo, I can't even believe that in 2018, people are still attempting to do this type of stuff, right? But, yes, he's not the first, he won't be the last. The allure of that type of a lifestyle, I told you already, to be able to buy out the bar, drive a little fancy car, wear some clothes where you can brag about and these kind of things, and spend all your money upon some waste girl, that is alluring to a lot of people who will continue to do this or waste man or whichever way you want to do it. Continue to do this for a while. And that's all the trappings and they have the perfect place for them. Because majority of them end up getting caught anyways. Right? Watch this. So somebody said, in the comment section, if you read that video comment section, you'll see the comment there where somebody said, good news is he will not be hit with the kingpin law. My reply was, there's a strong possibility that he will. The person said, yes, but it's highly unlikely. And I said, stay tuned because I'm going to break it down for you in a video. And this is the video. All right. So I'm going to break it down for you. Here we go. So this brother now, a flight crew member, you know, a flight attendant, they're on a plane, come out and give you little instructions, keep the people them safe and whatnot serve your drinks and them thing there. He took his job position and used it, violated it, right? And ended up getting caught at the airport with nine pounds of cocaine, nine pounds, you know? Nine pounds of cocaine on him, strapped to his body, strapped to his legs. Valued at over 160,000 US dollars, over 20 million Jamaican dollars in a one go. That's a lot. The, the amount that he was caught with and the amount that it's valued at street value, walk with me, is what's going to sink him, okay? So, let's look at the RICO drug law. Remember, I know the brother said, good news is he won't be hit with the kingpin law, and I said, yes, he could be. As a matter of fact, I think if he does not give up some... Let's talk about this, watch. So you have the RICO drug law. The RICO drug law basically establishes severe punishment or consequences for those who engage in a pattern of wrongdoing as a member of a criminal enterprise. Punishable by up to 20 years or can be increased to life. But there's a possibility of parole. Plus fines of $250,000 or double what that person made in the criminal ventures they were caught in. Walk with me so far? All right. So in order for them to hit this Jamaican nigga here with the, I mean, I said nigger, because you're dumb as hell. In order for them to hit him with the RICO law, they would have to go to court and prove that he was engaged in a pattern of wrongdoing. So a lot of people are saying, well, at the first time, him get catch. But a lot of other people are saying, no, me think same do it already. And eventually he got caught. Because nobody don't just pack on nine pounds and go. And a, a, a skilled prosecutor can stand there in a the courtroom. Remember, I know, them catch him. We don't know the details of his case. We don't know if they've been watching him. We don't know if they make him go through with one pound already. See where it's going. See me, I'm a come through with two, make him go on. We want to see where it's coming from and where it's going. Nine, okay, time to end it. We're not going to get anything else. He's the link. Hold him on nine. So, we don't know what information they have on him, right? We know he was caught, and I don't think he was caught by accident. 
So they would have to go to court under the recall law and prove that he was engaged in a pattern of wrongdoing. If they're able to do that, as a member of a criminal enterprise, meaning he's not the only one in connection with this. Somebody is responsible for the manufacturing, then them go somewhere else and them wrap it so it can't smell through the airport, dogs can't detect it, all this other kind of stuff. Then he got some inside link who does the searching at TSA and they're able to scan past all that and go through. All these members to his links would make his ventures possible. Now, that's a criminal enterprise, right? Under the recall law, if they can prove those three things, he could be hit with the recall law. The kingpin law is a bit more complicated, but even more dangerous. More dangerous because the kingpin law carries what is called the pine box sentence. The pine box sentence is just as it sounds. You're locked in a friggin' pine box for life. In other words, then, you can get life without the possibility of parole. Meaning, you will never be able to have parole as long as you are alive and breathing. I've told people before that there are people in prison right now that are doing football numbers, 60 years for drug offenses. And there are people that are doing 10 years for murder. I mean, no, a lot of people are going to say, let me sidetrack a little bit. A lot of people are going to say, Jamia, um... The U.S. government are the biggest drug dealer and rare, rare, rare. Yes, okay, whatever. That does not justify what your stupid behind is doing, okay? Because we know how the system run already. We understand that we are at a disadvantage at a certain point by doing certain things. So why even get involved? All right. Talk about the Kingpin Law now. The Kingpin Law was established to target large-scale traffickers. That is what the hell he is. Nine pounds of cocaine is no easy feat. 166, 160,000 Jamaican, one like a fly that's coming in, 160,000 US dollars strapped to your body in cocaine. That's a whole lot of friggin' cocaine. You understand? So the Kingpin Law target large scale drug traffickers who are responsible for long term and elaborate drug conspiracies. I'm going to be the prosecuting lawyer now. It doesn't get more elaborate than this. You have figured a way out how to get cocaine manufactured from Jamaica and flown into the USA past all our, or what you thought was going to be, past all our stops and checks. That is very elaborate. All right? That is very elaborate. Long term, they would have to prove that he has been doing that for a long term. And like I've said before, we don't know what information they have. Maybe them watch him go through with one pound already. Them said, mm, that's not enough. He got more. Let's see where it's going, where it's coming from. Remember I said that? All right. Two pound. Mm, that's not enough. We still want to see where it's going, where it's coming from. We want more people than just him. Boom. Nine pound pop up. Okay, we still haven't gotten anybody yet. I don't want to let that nine pound go through. That's a big bust. Take him down. So, the offender must have been an organizer, a manager, or a supervisor of the operation. And have obtained substantial income from the violation. This, under the Kingpin Law, carries a mandatory minimum of 20 years and forfeiture of all properties. That means any thing you own they're coming to take it away right that's why the other day they had um fbi agents down in jamaica looking at properties talking at the scamming video that they did i saw it on youtube and the man i said yep that house right there and that house right there some big blows and skirt house look like it's about 20 room and they're saying oh he's in custody and we're, we're we have our eyes on that one right there and that property right there them even swoop down upon Dudos, them family. Looking at the houses. The houses, the cars, and all that. So, under the Kingpin Law, they have the right to seize all properties. The bike, the car, the house, clothes, jewelry, everything. Right? Because they're saying that this is what got you these things. So, we're going to take all of it. Offender must have been an organizer, manager, or supervisor of the operation. Here's this. 
good prosecutor is going to stand up, and the state, the state don't play, going to stand up and say in court this. He is the organizer. That's why we couldn't find anybody, anybody else. He's the manager. He's the supervisor. It is his elaborate plan to do all this. He has the way. He has the means. He knows his job. This is what he does for a living. He has someone on the inside that's able to pass or he knows how to pass this and that and get it from here to there. He's the one that, had, that got found with it strapped to his body. Nobody forced him to do it. He did it. Right? So, this youth here now, his life is going to become a hell. More than it already is. Because here's what he's going to have to do to avoid the kingpin law. And believe me, they're going to try to throw the book at him. That's why them have bargaining and pleading and plea deals. They're going to say, give up the big man or give us some more people. Watch I say, if you think I'm joking. Why you think when them catch one scammer, you see them go to Jamaica and then next thing you have 10 people line up at the airport um, flying in from Jamaica to parts of the USA being extradited, handcuffed and shackled. Them grab one man and squeeze him head and him start talk. That's how the thing goes. Now they grab him with nine pounds of coke on him. They want to know who else is involved, how it's coming in and all this other stuff. Because if they don't squeeze him, he might have brought in nine pounds. But the way how and the links that he has might have been able to bring in a hundred pounds. They don't want to miss it. They're going to say to him, yo, we're going to hit you under the kingpin law if you can't give us who the manager of this organization is or who the organizer of this whole thing is. Who supervises it? And if he can't give up all that, it's going to be, okay, it's you. This was your elaborate plan. You hold them years here. You understand now? So the youth that's saying that him can't or it's highly unlikely, no, it's highly likely. People got to understand that these things happen fast, right? And on social media, where we live most of the time with these videos, so as the thing happen, we got to take time to teach, use these videos as a conduit to teach common sense to somebody out there who licky licky and who's looking to do this. Everybody always thinks, yeah, man, we have the proper link until it happens to them. And then the next person think, Fem link never good. Me have the proper link now. Then it happened to him. Then the next idiot think the same thing and the same thing. Ask any one of them that are locked up doing long time, they will tell you this. Damn, I never thought I was going to get caught though. That's how it always goes. Now, to end this video, let's talk about life in prison, in U.S. prison for foreigners. And I'm going to be very short and very blunt with this. Watch this. First of all, Enough Jamaican man can't fight. Not fist to fist. They're not boxers. They love weapons. That's why them with boss gun. Right? Them draw for something and lick somebody. In prison, you don't have none of that. You got these. Right? Most Americans, they love that boxing shit. I grew up here. I know this. Mr. Wan you would come from Jamaica and talk about how he was some black belt, whatever. Uh, uh, an American dude um, at high school. When I go to high school. This American nigga build like one big grown man, pick up the Jamaican youth and drop him on him head, the man start how seizures. Yeah? And he over there trying to do some wah. I don't know if a Jackie Chan movie or what the next one name we used to watch? Um one of them old Chinese movies that you know how we used to sit up and watch all them old Chinese movies and karate flick and go outside and try them thing that yeah. He tried that over here and got fucked up. Pardon my language, but he did get fucked up. So Life in prison for, life in U.S. prison for Jamaicans, for foreigners, is never pretty. It's never easy. For the simple fact that you're going to run into people close up that really don't like you. And a lot of them got nothing but time on their hands. You're an automatic enemy. And you can't draw an alliance because it's hard for you in there. It's a place where the weak get preyed upon, right? By predators. So if you don't have some links established in there, this ain't like Jamaica, you know, where you can't say, yo, mama send you nothing, no, I make me whole off the, the, the man them off of me. And if you don't have no link up here, you get frig. And most Jamaicans that are extradited here or come in here or get caught here, most of the time they don't have no link here. Then let's talk about how you're confined here. And let's talk about the behaviors that this uh, system promotes. That's why I started out the video by saying, if you want to come a foreign, 
compared man toenail and wash man drawers caged in like an animal then by all means that tickle your fancy go right ahead but remember this you're going to be the victim most of the time right and don't think it don't go on because I've seen the documentaries where they brought cameras behind the prison walls a man really dead behind there not to mention I have family members I don't want to draw the video out here too long but I have family members that have done serious time for serious crimes and the stories are crazy right so if you know one man I see of them coolie and pocket for lipstick for you and I see of them cigarette ashes for make makeup for you and I cut off your shirt <laughs> brain run there laugh and I cut off your shirt tail and tie it in a bow and I slap it on your body and send you down a man cell bring me back two packs of sardine and you crying all the way down the damn hall in your flip flops if you don't want to live that kind of life stop it alright get you a damn 9 to 5 work your way up slowly Nothing beats, you could hate that 9 to 5 like crazy. Go home and cuss about it and wake up and do it tomorrow again. Guess what? You are free to do all that. And when you come off of that 9 to 5 there, if you're a man, you can go look at some front and relieve your stress. You can back your fist in peace if you don't have no girl. When them lock you in them little place there, y'all need to start paying attention. I'm going to make another video specifically talking about life in U.S. prison for foreigners. Right? And how we are at a disadvantage when we are caught in this. And the next video is going to come with some video clips from behind those prison walls showing you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to cut this video right here. So, like, comment, share, subscribe. Leave your comment in the comment section below. It's SoFlo TV, man. That video, your name, that Jamaican is going to get a lot of time in U.S. prison. Hmm. God go with him, call me, can go. I'm out. Peace.